Nobody wanna see us together. <laughs> but, but it don't matter, matter no. Cause I like got you. You. <laughs> guys here we go starting off episode three with official name which you'll know that by now if you listen to episode one and two this is the game chatter podcast with capital r keep it cool got like a gcr uh logo thing going on guys what uh what have you done this week what's the newest thing you've played or like to play and uh we'll start talking about the topic i think we're gonna hit like the first literal og kind of gear hands-on we're talking controllers i want to start back from from the first to now what we love and what we hate some of the ridiculous buttons and the biggest improvements or improvisations we'll get all into the nitty-gritty about it but first brandon why don't you start off what you've been doing tell me what you've been playing what you love now it might be hard to believe but i've been playing wow and uh I really haven't played much else. Uh, I'm kind of just waiting. You got Tony Hawk's coming soon. I, I want to play that new Battletoads, but I kind of don't at the same time. So I haven't really played much. Uh, I watched the trailer. I don't know what to play. I just, I'm just i kind of in that weird space where nothing's coming out yet, but I have, don't want to play any of the old games. Um, so just been wow. Just chilling. That's nice. Keep it, keep it basic right there. Dakota, how's it about to you? Yeah, uh, this past week I've been finding myself playing uh, Overwatch. I've been playing a little bit of Overwatch. I've been practicing my tank, my Zarya plays, and all my, my spacing and everything. It's been pretty fun. Uh, I usually get back into Overwatch and get out of it like in month intervals. That's been good. But uh, besides that, I've been playing uh, Gears Tactics. It's the newly, most newly installed title in the Gears series. Uh, it's based around the same time around e-day which is like they're like s- the start of the war with the locust enemy yes uh, okay. and it's a tactical like um above view it's really cool if you like games like XCOM, uh it's it's right yes right okay up i was just alley. gonna ask if it was like XCOM. yes uh really okay. good awesome well, that's it that's what i've been doing i i kind of lied actually i have played a game so on the new marvel's avengers uh the beta if you played it you get a fortnite skin and my son made me play it and i <laughs> at first this game looks stupid I, i'm not into the marvel i love marvel but the game just doesn't appeal to me it's not bad it's not bad at all what is it is it like an action just kind of game it's kind of like like an rpg kind of yeah, it's an rpg ish uh i didn't play much i gotta play it a little bit i played as miss marvel and iron man um yeah, it's RPG-ish, but I just don't know. I'm afraid of all the micro tra- uh, micro transactions in it. I'm afraid it's gonna be so heavy. So that's the only thing I'm worried about. And I'm, gotcha. I'm gonna wait till it actually comes out. Everyone can review it and see if I'm gonna buy that. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about that, um, and I actually have something to add to this. And I'm usually in in a fog of war of not really playing anything. And I've come to a realization, guys. Um, I think it's because I haven't bought a game in a long time. And I think part of that is because I'm like, if I were to spend the money, I would want to play it more and get my money out of it. But all I've been riding off of is free stuff uh, from the marketplace. But that being said, tried hyperscape again, did the worst <laughs> I've, I've done, uh, you know, this morning. It, it, so no bueno there. So I changed Changed course of action, checked out what they had new. There is a new game out called uh, Spirit Bearer that's on there Ooh. out of um, Made Through Unity. It's from uh, Thunder Lotus Games. It is like awesome looking. It's beautiful. It reminds me of like Cuphead, how it's all kind of cartoony animated um, stuff. I don't think it's all drawn. It's not drawn like Cuphead, but it's like it's really good looking, like like kind of anime style. And apparently. The guy who pretty much helps spirits get across to the other world, uh, kind of like spirits, like Spirited Away, that old anime movie. You take that role and you got your ship and you got to build houses and like stuff on there to make them happy and go pick them up and do stuff for them. So far, I played you know maybe about an hour. Uh, I'm digging it. 
I have found something to play for right now, so we'll see how long I can ride this wave. I, uh, Anybody uh, seen this game? Yes. No, I've seen It's coming up on my um, like Steam recommended. Uh, and just like you said, like kind of the art style is really appealing. It's a platformer, right? Is it a, is it yes. a platformer? Yeah. It, uh, it does look really pretty. And from what I've seen, the reviews are great. People are enjoying it. So that might be that might be a little sneak sneak pick. That might, that might be something I might have to pick up and try it out. Yeah, well, I will keep all updated because it is kind of new. But uh, have you seen it, Brandon? I've never heard of it. Man, it's uh, it's really cool. It has, because of the platform and the art style, it's like Remembrance of kind of like Ori. It's just really it's pretty, and there's a lot going on, but it's platform. But there's What's a lot the of name depth. again? Spirit Farer, like a, like a seafarer, someone with a boat. You have a boat you can upgrade and get bigger. Um, there's buildings you can put on it. You have to like worry about how, how <clears throat> housing and feeding the spirits, I believe, and then do little tasks for them and stuff. You and your kitty cat named Daffodil. Sounds, I, I might have to actually look into this one. It's neat. It's, uh, like I said, so far, liking it. It seems the perfect range of me of like, Appealing from the eye, simple to to play, nothing so deep. I say that now, but I will keep you updated on how this goes and if I can continue to play this game. Before we uh, start off on our topic, guys, any other new something you've played or reasons to talk about? Yes, I actually did forget again. I have amnesia, obviously, because I forgot everything, but wow, imagine that. <laughs> I did play Fall Guys. Uh, that's a side effect. And Fall oh. Guys is amazing. I I <laughs> hate in, uh, multiplayer games. Like I've said before, I'm in love with this game. It's a good game. I can let my son play. Then I play. We take turns. We're having a good old laugh. Right, right. If you have kids and you want a little bit of PvP action, it's a beautiful game to get. I highly recommend it. Um... There's a level called the Seesaw, though. If you get that, just quit the game. It's it's worthless. <laughs> <laughs> is it a uh, what? Co- is it only PC or is it PlayStation and so PC? So from what I can tell, it's PlayStation Four and PC. But it looks like in China they're getting a mobile version. So if China gets it, we might get it eventually. Interesting. Might be worth paying like a big tablet or something. All right. Well then. With that being said, we'll tee right off into the main topic for the Game Chatter Podcast, Episode 3. We're going to be talking about game controllers and all their beauty and all their ugliness. How, how far they've come and crawled out of the primordial ooze that is the development of ridiculous people. And there's one I've never held that Brandon's showing me. I think it's a PlayStation controller. I like that it's red. It's a DualShock 3. That's cool. Ooh, I think. DualShock. DualShock. Well, good to know we have our facts straight. Moving on. All right, so I'll, uh, I've done a little research, guys, a little timeline to go through um, s- because I know it's going to spark off a lot of conversations and thoughts. So we'll kind of cruise through this. We'll hit the speed bumps we need to hit and uh, see where it leads us. Starting off, of course, the Atari. Uh, you know, y'all remember how the controller looks? Uh, right, I mean... The Atari was just a jo- like a stick and a button. Twenty six hundred. Right? Exactly. That's all you needed. Yeah. The amount of buttons, the amount of buttons was a button and a joystick, and it was a square, tethered, of course, <laughs> by a wire, and that's all it was because they were working with like you know sixteen bit or eight bit stuff, I, I guess, um, you know, Space Invaders, that kind of thing, and that was it. It did the job, of course. Bigger the games, bigger controllers. Brandon? So, I actually had an Atari, or someone had it, and I played it. The only problem with it was I had big hands, even when I was a kid, and my hands just dwarfed it. So, it was hard to move the joystick and try to hit that button at the same time, and it was real stiff. <laughs> <laughs> this was, uh, uh, it was like, what, this, this was 70s? The Atari came out in the 70s, I believe? Uh, like I did some research. And I believe so. I think it's seventy-seven. I mean, the game. Yeah, like we said, the like games Something we like had that. at that time, Space Invaders. I mean, Pong. You know, like the first 
video game. Right, and out. Pong was its own. Yeah, Pong didn't have actual con- like it, it. It the unit was Pong, and it had the paddles, so the wheels you turned. Um, and then they came out, you know, the Atari, and had like actual, uh, yeah, like a button and a stick to play, which really changed things up. And there was also the the Fairchild. If you heard of Fairchild series, and um, they made the F Channel, but it was one of the first consoles actually have cartridges also that sparked all that but there's um and i've seen this before because i went to when i was going to my radio school where they told you not to talk like this because it's called a radio puke uh i think his name was oh crap andy maybe anyway he's on a youtube episode of some gang of guys that went around like the country picking up old games and he told me all about game systems and stuff and he said he had one of these but uh it's the Fairchild, and it actually has it's not even like a box. It's a handle that you hold with one hand, and on the top of it has like a, a little bit of a joystick paddle mix, and it was that. So there wasn't necessarily a, a button. It was one stick with a joystick on top, and you could push it in, you could pull it out, and you could turn it like a paddle. So it, it was pretty unique. So instead of like a, a, a joystick by your thumb, it was a big one you held on with your hand, and you turned to to turn your character or drive, I guess, and then you could push it in or click it out to, to be A and B button huh. pretty much. Yeah, it's kind of goofy looking. Um, as of most <laughs> things in that era, it's kind of the breakout time for games and people were just, you know, the Wild West of all that. It was the, it like um, the And then now... Gaming. Yeah, they were like, what do we do? I'll put it together. Make it make the shit happen. So uh, it was awesome. <laughs> um, now, after that, around the time, they're, they're kind of rough. Anyone listening may know these dates or fused in uh, around those times, but I try to get it close enough so you understand. So we'll get into like the the actual Nintendo, the NES or Nintendo Entertainment System. So that became actual kind of a, a handheld, you know, it fit it between both your hands and they had the D-pad, right, on the left side. I think that's around the first time we saw that. Yeah. Um, and then it had... Uh, was it just? Well, I think it was. Was it two buttons or four buttons? They had it was two. It was an A and no, B. no, no. It had, it had. Yeah, so it had four total: A, B, and start and select. Yeah. Okay. Is that right, Brandon? I'm thinking of the right thing. Little square. Oh, I can't hear you, Brandon. Well, son of a gun! It had start, select, and A. There and we B. go. Okay. Yes, I get when I hear Nintendo, I get confused with like. Which one was the super and which was the, you know, and it also, which is like the first Wii experience, um, they had the zapper gun, the duck hunt, and I think they had a glove too. Did they have the gun? Or, I mean, the glove, power glove thing, was it, that's right? You know what I'm talking about? Uh, I remember the gun, but I don't, I've never heard of a glove though. Yeah. Yeah, and they had like a little robot too that came with the system. I think you controlled him or something. There was some like what? crazy stuff. They just, again wild wested it and threw it out and i've seen it if you see the robot you're like i've seen that little guy uh yes it, you know it's old school but um yeah the zapper gun for the duck hunt and the other thing is so awesome so the so glove awesome. you're talking about i do remember i think it was called the power glove or gamer glove yeah yeah i think so it is like a little robot That's hand it was cool. it's pretty sweet i'm not gonna lie it if I, if I remember watching videos and stuff it didn't work well at all but it looks like you were in the, like 200 years in the future. Right. The idea of it is, is super cool. Yeah. Um, so then I guess we get around like the Sega time. So is it, uh, Genesis came out around that time. Same thing with like, I guess the Dreamcast was a little bit later maybe. Uh, but so then the Genesis had the D-pad also. Um, uh, I want to say it had six buttons. I think it had like ABC, XYZ. And start. So the original Sega one had three, A, B, and C. Had three, then, okay. Yeah, then they had the, the, whatever the other one was called, it had six. Okay, gotcha. And then this, the start. Um, so we've yet to see, keep this in um, everyone's mind, we haven't seen really uh, any of the joysticks that we're used to by the thumb. We haven't seen any bumpers or triggers yet. Uh Everybody's rocking with this found out D-pad, and uh, you know buttons on the on the right hand. Uh, 
the Sega. So oh, then the Sega ones ahead. were. They looked like boomerangs. They were so big, though. Yes. They were twice the size of the Nintendo ones. Yes. Uh, I was just, yeah, so that's around the time, I think, also uh, the Dreamcast. It might have been a little later, but around, they had the, the Dreamcast and, like, Sega Saturn um, was a little later, too, because it actually went to discs. So the Dreamcast actually had a joystick on your left hand, and it looked like the first ugly Frankenstein brother of, like, the Xbox controller. Uh, it had a joystick on the left, um, and it was kind of like a like a spaceship shape. It actually looked like they thought about how your hands would fit a controller, um, and it had a couple the D pad, a joystick on the left, and then the four buttons, like like a again like an Xbox. So that start we're starting to resemble what we actually uh, what we actually like see nowadays. Y'all know what I'm. T- I never played the Dreamcast, but I I know that controller. Yeah, I think the PlayStation was first, but yeah, I do know what you're talking about. They had a memory card thing in the middle. That had a little screen. Yes. I don't. Yeah. I never right. never played Dreamcast either, but I think it was supposed to show you like your, what your memory has or what files you have saved or anything. Um, it kind of looked like you took a Nintendo 64 controller and an Xbox controller and just smashed them together. I I agree. Uh, and again, I never played one, but I've seen them, and I know that like that seems pretty revolutionary too. They like made a a spot. Like, we got cartridges for our consoles. We'll put a freaking cartridge on our in the controller here, which we'll talk about that with the 64, which, like, broke every rule that was being made then. Uh, but, uh, so we have... Okay, so then the Super Nintendo came. I believe, again, around this time. Uh, these are... When I talk, this is just my world. <laughs> uh, and it actually had the kind of slightly rounded... Again, so, like, the square one but give us some curvature on, on the handles uh, to kind of fit your hands better. And I think it had, I think it's the first time we saw bumpers. I think it had a left and a right bumper. I think, if that's the one I, I'm thinking of. I mean, I just had one. Uh, we had the D-pad, we had about four buttons, select start, and it had the little bumpers on the back of it. Yeah, so... I it, couldn't tell you if those were used very much, but... Right, over the course ahead, over the course of time, you can just see with the controllers alone how the evolution of games have become more complex and the requirement for more options and more control is like needed and like you can go back to like how we talked about pong you just you're going up and down you know but now we're entering like they're testing it around this time they're testing out the realm of like a 3d plane where we do need to jump we need to face different directions we then we just we can do more things and you can see that with the controllers as we just add more and more stuff right the the bane of like developers was like the the lack of of memory to develop a game so it it reflects the abilities that they had to make a game what they could produce like you're saying um is that what you're to say brandon yeah i can you imagine trying to play overwatch with the super nintendo controller and four buttons (laughs) yeah no they're they're, that'd be ridiculous it's impossible i jump between the same thing Right, it it's so nice though sometimes. On the uh, on, I was just saying on the Seafarers game, I think you don't. I mean, since it's a platform, or Seafarers. I mean, the Spirit Fairs game, you can use your D pad, and then your four buttons. So I don't need the other triggers. I don't need those bumpers. So it's nice not to have to worry about that. At the same aspect of big games, like it's nice not having to play a huge game to worry about a bunch of details, but. Again, the, the controllers evolved with the games because they had more options, and also gamers and players were obviously wanting more, and they could handle more and understand more. I got my thumbs down. I got these buttons down. My my index fingers and my other finger aren't doing aren't doing anything. Give them a job to do. So then you got like the again, Dakota you talked about the three D scape stuff started coming in and and all that. So it really changed a lot of stuff. I think that's where we get into um, the Sega Saturn. Which is not very popular. I don't know how I got one. Somebody gave it to us because I think it wasn't working, and it had nothing, nothing good. <laughs> I could remember there was a bug game. I think it was called Bug, but uh, it it was a bigger controller. Had like six buttons. Had a start. Had the bumpers. Um, and what had a maybe a part of a trigger too. But again, they got bigger and they got uglier, but they got more options. Now, if I remember, 
did that system ever really work? Didn't we play it like twice and the disc would never work? Uh, yes. Again, I got uh, I got a handful of games with that and the system itself, and I was, at, oh my gosh, if you gave a ten year old if you gave a ten year old game and said here it's yours, it doesn't work. It might like mother. Fucker, I will make this thing work. And I had it. I know you had to have it at like a like facing north at like twenty degrees up on like a tilt. And if you blew like into the controller slot just right, it would start to work. And there was like a uh, there was a I think a fighting uh, X Men game on there that was that was really cool. But that uh, thing was was a pain in the ass. And the hand, the controllers were atrocious, guys. Just Google those things. Um, it, cool. Again, they're trying. It was, it was you know they're making stuff happen. I uh I have an argument. Did y'all actually like the Nintendo sixty four controller? Cause I did not. It's the biggest piece of crap that uh. I love at the same time. Okay, because it had like uh. it had it right. It had the handles, you know, the curvature like we were talking about. It had the buttons, but it had this other like massive handle that looked like a just a dong, and it was in the way. Was there a Z button below the controller? Yes. Yes. I felt like it was yeah, so... Yes, so I was just about to... So this is... Yeah. This is the time for, for the 64 comes in, and this is where I can really start to shine on some of my knowledge. Now, I I love it. Because um, it, it the first console that I had in the system or thing, so that's just what I got used to. I will say the joystick, I always had a problem with that joystick. I think it broke a lot on some of the systems, and it had just the right hand had a trigger, and then you had the Z button in the bottom... But you didn't necessarily need the D-pad, so to me, they gave you more than enough for that. So it, it's like the it's like the perfect controller back then for stuff. My thoughts. So I think a lot of it's nostalgia. I don't think you really, you may not really like it, but it was your first, and we all remember our first. Let's be serious. It did break down <laughs> a lot. The cool thing about it, though, is they had a memory card in the back. But it also had a rumble little cartridge you could put in the back so it could shake. Um, the C buttons were pointless. And the, the uh, like you said, the stick, it broke a lot. But the design was different. You could, there was always, there was so many different kinds. You had like different yeah. colors, some see-through. Remember the first see-through one you had? You're like, oh. Yeah, this stuff was getting was getting so legit then. It's perfect. I mean, you 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 played on Dakota, right? Yeah, I I was I was young. This was uh I was still really little when this came out, and I was first still being introduced into games. And I believe one of my main problems was for my age, my hands were so small, and the controller having these buttons spread out, kind of like uh, more options, and the and the stuff in the middle, I would have a hard time being able to do everything I wanted because I, like I, my hands were small. I didn't know whether I wanted to use the joystick or the D-pad. And yeah, some of the buttons were irrelevant. Uh, I, I do respect it. I respect the controller. I was, I, I still enjoyed the 64. I loved it, but I just, I always was frustrated and it was, it was a little, a little it, too right, much when I was for that age. I, that I understand. I see that. And it is uh, not very appealing as to the eye. And it is the only controller that had like three handles, I guess. But it's so iconic because of that. And again, it's just more than what you what you needed at times. Sometimes you could grab over there real quick, hit those C buttons if you needed to look around in, in Mario and get uh, and get your camera stuck or, or like look up into your hat. Like, you know, like go up against the wall. I remember that and like turn the camera to like see through yourself and, and be all ridiculous but uh yeah man it had it had so the first controller to have three handles um a, a bottom button so the z button a bottom a button on the bottom of your handles which i'm surprised they didn't introduce that into either the new controllers talking it, that they're coming out with now for the new systems uh and brand you'll fill us in on that later or even when they made the the xbox one and the ps4 like your hands are already there give me like a little Give me like a wheel or like a little paddle for my pinkies to to roll. I mean, just if it's scrolling through a menu, they could do that. But and then so the sixty four had like you, like you said, Brandon, the the rumble packs. That is so freaking cool. And like you remember Game Shark? There was like a like cheap brick you could put on the back of that thing and just fucking look up whatever 
uh, whatever game you're playing somehow and got those to work. And it, they, that's, that was crazy. No other game console had that going on, uh, for what I remember. And they had the colors, like you said, and that was the coolest to me. Um, partially nostalgia a little bit, but still you can't, it, it is a ugly, beautiful thing. And the first to really get the packs implemented. Now, do you, go ahead uh, go for it. No, okay. I was, I was going <laughs> to I was going to say, if you think the 64 controller is bad, my argument is the GameCube controller is the worst controller I've ever played with. And this is going to no, make people yep, mad. Yep. People love that controller, <laughs> and it's garbage. It's hot garbage. I I totally agree on this one. I, I, I did not like GameCube controller at all. Uh, again, it was... It, it just seemed it had the curvature. It had it was a little comfy, but the buttons were different. There were like it was like the same letters, but they were changing where they were, and the I could never do it. I had such a hard time playing GameCube games. Oh whatever, y'all. Okay, we're gonna fight. the The GameCube controller again, a lovely shape, but curvature is fantastic. This baby, I love the color anyway. The blue. Everything else is gray at that point, um, and we'll get into the fatty Xbox controller in a second for the fir- the original series. But the the GameCube controller, my favorite. I play this because uh, I'll, I'll I'll pull mine out every once in a while, and also the console. <laughs> and now the the trigger buttons on the back of it are really like I don't know. They're really clicky and deep. Like they feel really good when you're hitting the. And I think they're. It's weird too, like a Nintendo controller is. I think there's two on one side, one on the other, but still had the weird. Instead of the, like the four-way C buttons, it had the little, uh, the little yellow stick for the C thing. But my favorite part was the triggers in the back of it. Like they're really clicky. They're really good. It had a big A button. Um, dude, y'all are cracks whack guys. Don't be hating. I will say the triggers on the back, they were fun to push. You're right. They were very deep and they made a really good. <laughs> A satisfying clicking noise, but that C trigger analog stick was so small, it didn't make sense. And the other one was so cheap, it always broke. And it's ugly, it's just flat out ugly. <sighs> the hate, Dakota, do you care to chime in? Yeah, okay, Pick I can, I right can, uh, I can relate with the triggers. Uh, I do. I'm sorry. It, it was nice. It was a good feel with the triggers. Uh, and I mean, I do agree with the joysticks. I, don't, I didn't agree how they were different sizes. You know, they, they could have been the same size. If it was, if, if the, the big one had the durability, the little one, but the little one was as big as the big one, it would be perfect. Uh, but nostalgia, I mean, yes, people loved the GameCube. GameCube has like some sick titles on it that people can remember for their entire lives. People, some people, like how we grew up on Nintendo 64. A lot of people started gaming with GameCube, and it's it's a good look. It's a good looking controller. It's iconic. I'm not. I was not a fan. But it doesn't make sense because I'm a fan of the Xbox, the original Xbox, uh, that fat hunk of the controller. Uh, but I guess at this time I was a little yes. older, and I would like sit it on my lap. This this one was interesting because I it had the black and white buttons, right? It had the Yes. The two, and I remember that because in like Halo, the only reason it was that because you could that turned your flashlight on and off, <laughs> I believe. Yeah, yeah, and that's what so very like so the perfect. Let's let's go into this. So around this time, us guys here at the Game Chatter Podcast, we was getting hot and heavy into gaming. So they come out with the Xbox and and, and Halo at once. So do you think I believe they purposely made the white and black button? And white for Halo that came out with it exclusively to be your flashlight. Like, how perfect is that? And they're like, we'll just keep them on there. Now, PlayStation 1 is also rolling around. And this is before the very first release of PlayStation 1, guys. Remember this, though. Does not have joysticks. The PlayStation 1 controller first has the regular. Yeah, I think your time's off what? a little bit. Uh, the Xbox came out with the PlayStation 2. Oh, I'm sorry. With PlayStation 2, you're right. Okay. I apologize. Very good. And that had the had two joysticks, the actual yes, uh, two joysticks and the shock. Yeah, it vibrates too. It, it, 
It's okay. Um, and the Xbox you didn't call it, you did didn't as well. You didn't call it Zelda, so you're fine. Oh, man. Yeah, no, I still win. <laughs> yeah. Surprised you're still alive. Dakota. I know. I'm surprised <laughs> I was welcome back on the, on the show. I try to kick you. Don't worry. <laughs> he did. <laughs> we'll talk about this later. I've got some paperwork for you to sign. Uh, no, uh, so, yes, the, the Xbox fatty, I think they refer to it as the Duke. Uh, I call it fat boy. Um, that thing, it, I liked part of it because it was so big, but it seemed like it was a little too wide. And the joysticks got like, or was there even like a rubbery coating on them? Or I feel like they were just smooth. Um, the left one had like a dip in it. It was really big, but the right one had a small dip. So it was like different. It felt different. If that makes any sense. Yeah. Okay, I knew they're they're different somehow. Um, so we've got, so that's the so between um the we got the PlayStation Two, got the DualShock rolling, pretty solid controller, um, and then the Xbox original controller, and so instead of Xbox turning on, uh, a bumper, two two back bumpers, they have now like the first real like trigger, because I think the PlayStation like it's flat, it's like a rectangle on the back of it, right? Like it presses in. But it doesn't. Fit. It's not like a trigger shape. So the Xbox has black and white and triggers, and then the PlayStation Two has just four uh, L1, R1, L- R2, L2. And I will right. go on record and say, at this time, when uh, when nineteen whatever or two thousand, the PlayStation Two controller was the greatest controller ever made. At this time, there was nothing better. It's hard to argue anything else was better than this controller. That's, uh, yeah, I totally congr- I totally agree. Uh, I mean, even in, isn't, isn't the PlayStation 2 is, was the most sold console of, like, of all time, right? I think it had the most, like, sales. Yeah, I think Sony beats it every time, mm. but yes. Yeah, I mean, this is, uh, I mean, if you think about it, now that we have, we have, we have a lot of buttons, this is pretty much like the cap of buttons, like, in modern gaming is what we're seeing pretty much in the DualShock. Even the joysticks were clicking. You could do stuff yes. with that. Uh, yes, I was just going to say that. And yeah. it was around this time around the Xbox and the PlayStation 2 like generation where we were getting options to change our control loadout. Because it was, people were playing, there were so many different play styles that people were using these controllers with that you had the option to change how you wanted, like you wanted this to move or you, you wanted your D-pad to move and the joystick to do this. Or you wanted X to jump, or you wanted circle to jump, and you do this. Like people were playing differently, all on the same controller. Yes, and I think I will let me get to get to the the point here where where you're heading to, or what you what you got. Brandon? I will say you're sitting on the edge of your seat. Uh, <laughs> the Xbox controller, as much as I didn't like it, how big it was, it's funny because I didn't like the other ones because they were small. But I think I got so used to how small they were. Then when I get something big, I just like, ah, I don't know what to do no more. Um, the emphasis on the oh, two analog stick being your main, <laughs> your main stuff to move around, that was brilliant. I, just, I don't know why PlayStation doesn't want to move an analog stick up. I think it'd be better. Uh, but yeah, Xbox was the first one to like, hey, the analog stick's going to be your main thing. And I think that was a brilliant move. Get away from the D-pad. Because the D-pad's sticky, doesn't work right. It's hard to turn. Right. Still have it, but right. don't make it the main. In most games, don't, don't make it the main course of movement. You know. Right, right. This is this is touching what like again like the sixty four was trying to like do. Like, well, we like this joystick idea, but we like the D-pad idea, and we you know someone mentioned they want to be able to do this and stuff. So again. They're, they're, everything's kind of getting fine tuned. Games are becoming bigger. Uh, options are getting you know all around. So we'll say everyone's playing Halo. What kind of le- I can't remember. I cannot remember exactly how they came out, but I remember you could do uh, boxer was the setting, and then there was southpaw, yep. and then the regular. So pretty much to me, it was what did you like to do to melee? What do you hit to melee on a game? Like right now. What are you thinking? If you throw a grenade or, or hit, what what do you like to throw with, and what do you like to hit with? That's a that's a great great conversation. Uh, B was my melee uh, for me playing Halo back then, and I 
the grenade, I believe, was uh, left trigger. Because at the time, I believe left trigger was grenade. And this might be the default settings. And the right joystick to click down was to aim down sights for, like, snipers and things like that. So B was definitely my melee. I think so. I do get it's been a while, but that's what I get. I like, because um, I don't think on the original one, and Brandon, you're probably good about this, I don't think you could aim down your sights with the left trigger on the original Halo. I think it was clicking down the joystick. Um, but I like to, uh, oh, what was it? Um, yeah, throw. I think you could throw with the left trigger, aim down your sights with the, the right stick, and then melee was B. But I later like to change that to melee with pressing down uh, on, I like to crouch with B, and then and then uh, melee with the right joystick clicking down, aim down sides with left trigger, and then throw a grenade with left bumper, which I think that's kind of the standard now. No, no. What do you what do you play, Brian? Um, or how, does that sound right at it all? It does. I don't remember the exact one I played then. I don't remember which Halo I uh, was the setup I like. I like when you was it R three. I like to hit with that. I don't know if it was Halo or Call of Pushing Duty. Pushing the stick down. Yeah, the 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 right stick down. That's the way it should be. For me, personally. okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and, what I like. um, yeah. The aim down scope would be the left trigger, then right trigger would be shoot, which is I think that is default now for most games. I don't know if it was Halo. It might have been Call of Duty, so I don't want I don't want to say oh yeah it was from Halo One, but I whatever game made that that's the standard now and that's the way I like it. All right, what about this is a good little uh, let's get down this rabbit hole. Do you like your crouching um, to be uh, toggled? What's the word? Toggled? Do you like? Do you do you hold down your crouch when you're getting shit done, or do you like to toggle it, be locked in crouch, and and do it? Which could be you know delay you for uh, a second. It's faster if you just hold it down. But what do you? What if do you, you do? if you don't have your crouch on toggle, you're an uh, alien, and you're weird. <laughs> <laughs> That's all I have to say. Yeah, I like to have it locked. I think it depends on what I'm playing. If I'm playing a multiplayer game, I don't like. To, I don't want to be locked. I want to be able to crouch and stay. Um, and uh, be able to get up whatever when I let go of it to hold it. But in you know, like a story game or something, I'm playing solo player, you can lock that. I, I know what I want to be when I want to be, and I can hit the button. Because multiplayer is so much more faster that you should That's be true. able to, you need to get up. Or I can just let it go instead of having to push it again. Right, okay. right. Yeah, that's true. Let's, uh, okay, so we've talked about toggling down the sides. Uh... There was something else I had re referred to as like as far as controller use, that was good. Uh, it does make me think about what was some games. There was a Brandon. There was a game. I could not tell you what system it was. It could. It was at your house, so it was either, I think the original Xbox or could have been a PlayStation. But I'm trying to think of games that made you wear the shit out of your controller. Like it was either tap A as fast as you can or tap this button as fast as you can. Or it was like a Mario Party kind of thing, or it could have been like a. Uh, there's certain games where you spin the, you know, rotate the joystick to reel something in or something like so, that. There was um, a. There were certain games, and I got so good. There at was that. a Mario Party game where you had to do tug of war. I could not do it. You had a broken arm. Yes. You had a broken arm at the time, and I made you do it for me. You come to my house just so you can do this tug of war thing <laughs> with the broken arm, um, and yeah. I can't think of there was an Xbox one where if you didn't tap A fast enough, you, you might as well just take the game away. But I can't remember the game. It might have been a party game, or there's even certain games like that, like it's a fishing part of it or something like that. But there's certain aspects in games where I love where they throw that in. They're just like, have a blast, hit that shit as much as you can, get it done, and like, uh, yeah, I, I love stuff like that. There were certain real end games. I think yeah, Mario Party had a most of those. I think there was some parts in pokemon stadium uh there was like a lick -a tongue game on like one of the side things yeah and you had to like eat as much food as you could and it was just like press b dude just press b and i f on fire killing it but so to move on a little bit uh, my yes. curious how did you feel going from the xbox to the xbox 360s controller i uh, right so we would be around the time era of so we're hitting Xbox 360, the PS3, and the, and the Wii. Yeah. I can go ahead and cover PS2 to PS3. Nothing. Uh, 
The only difference was they took away the rumble. Then they're like, oh, my bad. We'll add it back. That's it. <laughs> I think they got a uh, – didn't it get a third? It got instead of start and select, and it had, like, a middle button. Was that just to connect the wireless controller? It was, like, analog or some other little um, – It was a home. It was, like, a home button. button. That's oh, uh, okay, this okay. Con- this generation is when they started the home button. Coming around there. You know what I forgot about the big Xbox – one, I'm sorry, let's go back for one second. The best thing about the big Xbox controller, you knew what console it was for. Cause that thing said Xbox so fat. <laughs> yeah, it was huge. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry, I, just, I, I was looking at it. I thought about that. It also had, um, which PlayStation didn't have, um, it did have insert- uh, insertion points in the rear for like a, a memory card. Couldn't you put a memory card in the back of that? And take it over to your friend's house and play Halo with your person or something. It had spots in the back for for something. I think you could could put stuff in. I don't in. remember what it's for, but I have a feeling it did too. Yeah. Okay. Uh, from what you said about uh, <laughs> um, like third first thoughts with the Xbox 360 controller, I felt like it was everything the Xbox original had, but just perfected. We lost the black and white button. Uh, it was smaller. It was a little more compact. It still felt great. Uh, X- Xbox 360 is one of the most like feel good in my hand controllers I've ever had. Uh, we still had yeah. the um, the upper left joystick and the lower right joystick, which is always which I always preferred. Uh, the joysticks were different; they were the same same feel. We did have the Xbox button. It had the lights, so you knew which player you were. That's something I thought was really ah, cool. Ah, yes. And isn't that also when we got like. The Ring of Death, or that was with the console, not the controller. That's the whole console situation. Sure. You, but you don't say that on a in... podcast. You just kill someone's Xbox. <laughs> shh, <laughs> shh, shh. There was. Oh, we'll have to discuss that at another point because there's so many. Like, that, okay. Uh, <laughs> um, yes, with the 360 controller, I loved because it just got into your hand a little better. It felt like per, like a hardcore like professional controller by itself. And the joysticks were coated better. I think they were the same kind of had that little little divot in there for your thumb a little better. Um, but the buttons as we're instead of like the Xbox one. Now the buttons are kind of flatter down. I remember doing the 360, like they were really bumped. Like they were big, like there were bubbles sticking out of the thing. Um, but I did love that. It told you it was easy to connect and you could tell which player you were. The big button in the middle to, to bring up your, I guess, your home screen, like you were mentioning, Brandon, before. Um, and then I couldn't tell you too much about the the PlayStation 3. This is when I started only, I mean, maybe some some handheld Game Boy kind of advanced stuff around that time, too. A little bit dying off. And then I was just Xbox and touch PC a little bit around this time. Um, So from going from uh, the Xbox to the 360, it was so much better to go to the two trigger, uh, four triggers instead of the black and white. Because... Black and white, because the control was so big, it was hard to reach. And, I mean, luckily Halo, all yes. you needed was a flashlight. But other games, most games didn't even use them because the buttons were so hard to reach. So I feel like the 360 controller, yeah. it was one of the things, like, it's better, but it's not quite there yet. The D-pad was a little, the D-pad was awful on the 360. But it was, you knew it was like, okay, it has potential. It's almost there. I want to bring some love in for the Wii controller. You go home. That go thing home. again. Nintendo. <laughs> did, <laughs> Nintendo is just forerunning. You know, it's what they do. They've been in the game forever. Trying new stuff will throw us out. They gave you a stick in one hand, and kind of resembling the Fairchild thing. It's just a handheld little joystick thing, and the mo- the motion, of course, which was fantastic. But the coolest thing was in your the dominant hand, I guess. Um, it didn't have very many buttons. You had the Z button on the back again. I think you had A, B, you had a home button, but it had a built-in speaker into the controller, and it vibrated too. That's the most responsive, other than visual, you know, from games. Like your your hand now also, um, with the other controllers were vibrating, but it also has sound coming out of your controller. Freaking awesome. Why not? Why don't why don't the new controllers have that? Put a damn speaker right there. Put in put a another controller for my pinky or something that doesn't have to you know like. That's awesome. Um, because you are y'all are Xbox bias, ho- Xbox homers. Um, the new PlayStation does have a speaker on it. 
So not the not the five, but the really? four. And you can hear like shaking of cans on some games, the flashlight going off on like Last of Us. Oh really? Yeah, it's really cool. Uh the motion yeah. sensor on the Wii controller really? was awful. It never worked right. Yeah, I uh, uh I believe the idea was revolutionary. Uh it was uh it was cool. It got attention. It was really unique. And it, it wasn't perfected. The idea was great. Uh you could kind of do it, but I wish it was a little better. I would have gotten it if it was a little better. But man, you know, I mean like Mario Kart alone brought people in, you know. Like it it was it was cool. I did like the idea. I never got one, never had one. Uh I think it was kind of ahead of the game, but kind of like you were talking about with the Xbox, the 360, they were almost there. They, if they would have a little bit better, if the tracking was better, they would have killed it. I think, uh, I think this was the point where this is just my opinion. Nintendo decided, okay, we're not going to compete for like better games. We're going to go for the family games. We're going to go for the uh, party games, and and their controller was great for it. Wii Sports with that controller yeah. was so much fun. But like, you would have the controller almost facing you trying to get it to pick a game. Um, the speaker, like you talked about, sometimes got muffled because the, uh, the volume was like too loud or something. Um, that cord was in the way. Uh, so even though it was wireless, that long cord was stupid. Yeah. I remember seeing they're, pictures. They're trying stuff. I remember seeing pictures of people breaking yes, the their videos. TVs because they – would bowl on Wii Sports and they would just let loose yes. their controller and knock somebody out, break their TV. It, and they had to start like bringing people with like the uh, the strap. They had to start wearing the strap. It came with their wrists. Yes, that was a, a wasn't some fantastic Christmases going on. Wow, mom, I got this new console. And the dad's like, thanks, I got this new TV. And the kid's like, let's get some bowling done. Fuck your TV. <laughs> I'm like, just get trashed or anything. Or there's like dogs. And now the same stuff's going on with VR. Like people are like walking into stuff or smacking children or like, yeah, uh, it's good times. So it's the we changed a lot of lives. We'll, we'll say that. All right. Um, before we keep beating this dead horse, what do I need to know about the new? I have no idea what's coming out with the new console uh, controllers, Brandon, uh, uh, other than they probably look the same. Is there any other special stuff? Like so we talk the speaker thing. I didn't know. The PS4. So are we talking about the four or the five? The PlayStation 4 or PlayStation 5. Which one are we talking about? Just the new, yeah, whatever, the, the X Series, Xbox, and the PS5. Um, what's up with All those right, guys? All right, so the uh, the Xbox Series X is just going to be in less latency. I think they added, like, a share button or something. It's not, it's pretty much, we didn't talk about it yet, but the Xbox One controller is pretty perfect. And they realize it, and they're like, we're not going to change much. So just keep it what it is. Use it for whatever you want. So, I like that. If, you, if it's not broke, don't fix it. I did. Um, right, right. They did, like I said, make the buttons flatter and, and the joysticks. They put, like, again, I, I like the joystick coverings on all this, like, this stuff, but those felt really good, too. Um, it's worth, yeah, it's worth talking about. We should talk about those, too. Um, but not much change, but they did get better. Yeah, I think, yeah, the Xbox One is the best. Um, the PlayStation 4 controller, they... It's like they tried add that little big old thing in the middle where you can swipe it. It's just no one ever used it because most third-party games, they have to make it for both systems, so it's hard to make it for that. Then Xbox doesn't have that feature. Okay. So they got to make it where they can play on both. So I thought that was a wasted opportunity. But it's a good controller. Like the, It does have the voice on it. Uh, like I said on The Last of Us. Your flashlight will go out of batteries, and you have to shake it. It'll have a shaking noise, but it's still it's not used much. Oh, that's. But it, it's a good controller. It's a really it's good a pretty idea. Pretty good controller. It feels yeah. good. Um, no batteries, which is nice. Um, some people like some oh, people. Right. It's only chargeable, right. right? Some people don't like that because the good thing about batteries, you can just pop new ones in and keep going. Obviously, it costs money, so there's the good and bad on that part. Do you think that's going to uh, change? That's probably going to be the norm, I would assume, is just have those little, maybe maybe they come with a little charging tower for your controller that you get with a console that you buy, and there's no more batteries or all charger? Um, PlayStation is staying no, ch- no batteries. 
Xbox is staying with batteries. Oh, hmm. so so really? yeah. And hmm. to talk about the PlayStation Five controller, they got a thing they're calling haptic feedback. So let's say we're playing the new game Dead Dead uh, Death Loop. I think is what it's called. If your gun jams in the game, your your little trigger button will jam, so it won't be able to push it down at all. Um, would so. Oh, that's yeah, so awesome. and uh, like Ratchet and Clank, there's gonna be a gun. It's gonna be a shotgun. It's gonna be like a two barrel shotgun. If you pull it down halfway, halfway you're gonna feel resistance, and one shot's gonna take off. But if you push it all past the resistance, two shots goes off. So PlayStation is really trying oh to go the extra mile, which they don't have to. Their control is great. I I appreciate the um, desires like. If worse comes to worse, we can go back to our old thing. Let's try something new. Let's make it better. So, I get Xbox's point of, hey, let's just keep it the same. But I kind of enjoy PlayStation's trying to make e- to push the envelope. Yeah. No, holy crap. This is, that's awesome. Um, And from also a sound designer aspect of it, when, you know, um, because sound has a lot to do with it, like you said. There's games, if you're shooting your gun, the sound designers have made the gun, you can hear a noise of something getting lighter or empty sounding, so you can also, you don't have to be watching your ammo count. You can hear the gun run out. You're like, I need to reload. Stuff like that, like the feedback, audible feedback, or like you said, this heptech feedback stuff, it is just the next, you know, the more spice that they that they need to really immerse the player uh, into a game so if i'm playing a game and i hear it sounds awesome and now it freaking feels like my gun's jamming that is so cool that sounds that has to be the next level if xbox isn't doing that uh, unless it's trash unless it doesn't work very good and all it does is distract you and pull you out of the game um because now you can have audio immersing you immersing you into the game and your controller physically like you said rumbling giving off sound uh, triggers being pushed or delayed, like you said, that's so cool. That sounds perfect. Um, it, they also said like on racing game, if you're driving on mud, you're gonna f- it's gonna feel like you're driving on mud. And they're calling it haptic feedback. I'm pretty excited about it. Um, yeah. <coughs> the I forgot what I was gonna say. It must not have been that important. <laughs> Go ahead, Dakota. I uh, uh I like for the PlayStation the controller I do appreciate the stride of going and trying new things and like it's the new new age you know technology with this new stuff that we have going on to like test the limits of what we can do in a compact compact controller I think that is crazy but I do agree with the Xbox where simplicity is bliss you know if it works then it works you know don't don't mess with it uh, I'm really now coming, it's like a battle, internal battle with me. Like the stuff that's coming out, I don't know which one I want to get. PlayStation. Awesome. I'm thinking about it. I think <laughs> I might change teams. I don't know. That this is from an Xbox fanboy. Go PlayStation <laughs> until Halo comes out. Or just buy them both. Yeah, yeah like we covered in the last broke. episodes, uh, exclusive stuff. We're, all right, I think we've covered a lot for the controllers and everything. That's that's great stuff. Um, it's too cool. Um. Guys, I'll have a link for our uh, our, our email in the bot uh, along with this episode. If you have anything you'd like to say or comment, something we missed about a controller, leave it there. Also, feel free to join in on our Discord channel. Let us know what you thought. Throw in ideas or topics or things we've missed. Or if you want to argue about some stuff that we covered, maybe we will. Yeah, sometimes it's just nice. Uh, let's touch off for some news. Let's get into esports, and then I'll hit you with a. I it took me a second to figure out a good quiz. I like to try to make them up on my own and not look them up. And it kind of goes perfect with what we were just talking about with some of these things. I'm excited for it. First, educate me, Brandon, on some news that I need to know. Um, there's a virus, and stay at home. <laughs> Video game news. Oh, okay, my bad. <laughs> oh. Okay, so a fan, but the fandom was <laughs> this weekend, which is like DC's big old event. And if you listened to the last episode, I told you there's two new Batman games coming out, and I, I was right. Imagine that. Oh, wow. So, I said there's a Batman game, but it's actually called Gotham Knights, and you're playing just as Red Hood, uh, Batwoman, 
Batgirl? I think it's Batgirl. Robin and uh, Nightwing. Batgirl sounds right. Nightwing's the one you want. Uh, so Batman's dead. So it's going to be pretty interesting. Um, I said it's from Rocksteady, but it's actually from uh, Warner Brother Montreal, uh, who helped with the uh, Arkham Originals. Then um, the other one is the Suicide Squad game, but it's not coming out to 2020 and Superman's evil, so I'm down for that. Uh, anything Superman put me in it. Xbox also released their UI for the new Xbox One X. Series X? It's one Xbox Series. What a terrible name. Series X X, yeah. What can can uh, they come out yeah. with something worse? Xbox Series X UI, <laughs> but it's supposed to update on everything. So it's gonna be the same UI on your computer, same UI on your phone. So it's not confusing. You learn it, you're gonna learn it on everything. But it's kinda like that. They call it the seamless Xbox UI. So then hmm. Uh, I ain't get much to say about that. It's just I don't think they have much to show, so they're just like, uh, show the UI. Um, they got Gamescom coming this weekend, and if you're a fan of video games, that's like the next big conference. We know for a fact where Warcraft's gonna be there. Um, hopefully we get a release date for the new expansion. Don't worry about that. Oh yeah, really. <laughs> don't get too excited. <laughs> so, so that's this weekend. <laughs> As you work on your Long boy. Hey, I am uh about <laughs> less than two hundred thousand away. That's about forty bucks if I just want to buy it. It's, stop distracting me. That's pretty much all the news. There wasn't much to talk about this week. It's pretty quiet. Uh, Gamescom is like I said this weekend, but you should all watch it if you can. I think they said twenty new games going to be announced or be featured there. Hey. Um. But that's pretty much it. Uh, I'm looking right here to see if I see anything else. Nothing. Video oh, games I have, I have something to add. Oh, oh, breaking news. Dun, 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 dun. I have something to add. <gasps> let me, let me add something to this. All right, Aaron, <gasps> don't freak out. You're I had a shine. big one. I forgot. Go ahead. I think I heard about um, uh, Bethesda has screwed up, and we're talking about the new. Elder Scrolls, and now that thing is getting way delayed, but because they've been putting putting more of their potential into space, Starlink, 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 something like that. Yeah, yeah, it's a space RPG thing. Yeah, tell me, I help. Yeah, that's their. Um, you did help. That's their space game. It's gonna be like the, what's that? Uh, Obsidian game. Um, the space one. The one I uh, Outer World. Outer Worlds. Yes. Yeah. That's yes. like their version of it. Yeah. It'll be good. It, hopefully they switch the engine. But why would you tell me about an Elder Scroll game that's not supposed to come out in for another four, six years? So they're saying yeah. at least it's not coming out to at least twenty twenty four. They announced it. We've two already been years waiting ago. nine years. Yeah. Uh and you know they're gonna release the new Skyrims for the PlayStation Five and stuff. I'm so, I'm getting pretty sick of Bethesda, thinking they can just ride on Skyrim forever. So there was one thing I forgot to mention. Reports are the new switches are coming in 2021, like the the generation two of it. Oh, okay. But that's pretty much it. It's been pretty quiet. Uh, I, I, that's all I got, buddy. All right. Perfect. Thank you. Dakota, your time to shine. Sport me up, e-boy. Yeah, so uh, pretty much what we got on eSports right now is uh, the COD Playoffs finals are coming up on the 29th. Uh, we got the brackets right now. So battling at the winner's finals, we have Atlanta FaZe facing off against the Dallas Empire. That's going to be for the uh, the main main bracket. And the two teams fighting for redemption in the elimination round five are going to be none other than the Chicago Huntsmen and the London Royal Ravens. Uh it was pretty cool, actually. Just a little side note: pretty cool logos for how like the Huntsmen and Ravens and stuff. <laughs> they got some really cool stuff going on. Um, for more information about the League of Legends uh, Worlds for 2020, 24 teams are invited from all regions across the world, and it's uh, to see who's going to be reaching from the top and who's going to be left in the dust. The matches are going to be played on patch version 10.19, so that means the newest champion is going to be disabled, 
which I'm totally fine with. We don't need a Yaspo 2.0. Oh. Uh, yeah, my solo my solo grind has been uh, tra tragedy. Uh, so some cl some really good games happened today. If you're a TSM fan like myself, you must be in a great mood. Earlier today, TSM had a great, awesome reverse sweep against Golden Guardians. Uh, we needed it. Uh, TSM was kind of having some problems during this uh, split. And now but we have to win another two more games in order for us to head the world. We're going to stay in it. And other than that, that's pretty what's, that's what's going on in some big leagues right now. Again, we are not going to see any more new stuff until September hits. Uh, but that's that's your esports for this cast. Nice. What does TSM stand for? Team Solo Mid. <laughs> Texas Motor Speedway. Ah. Fire. I was thinking Texas something too. No, Team Solo Mid. Gosh. Our Texas poster boy uh, Bjergsen is the solo, the mid laner. He's pretty much like my. Uh, my League Legend Idol. Oh, wow. Yeah, he's freaking great. <laughs> All right. Thank you, gentlemen, for the education for our lives. This will continue this section of the show now for some sports of our own and competition. It's time for the Frankly Tankly Showdown quiz. What I have orchestrated and constructed for you fine gentlemen and you as the listener as well can play along. It is the Name That Console game i'm going to name off some games and you have to tell me if they are for the xbox series of stuff the playstations a nintendo or all of those consoles now there very well could be some of these that uh like the latest one could be on multiple consoles somehow i try to keep it well defined and accurate but a uh, again um this is gonna be my rules <laughs> until until you correct me as we go along, gentlemen, uh, it's not going to be turn taking. Just the first one to say it, I think that's the best. I bet I have better internet. <laughs> Any questions? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> okay, <laughs> dudes. <laughs> thanks. All right. Uh, we'll start again. Just say Xbox, PlayStation, or Nintendo, or all for this i should have ordered these better because i can't uh they're kind of a cluster frack coming up first fire emblem nintendo yes well, that was so fast okay <laughs> brand's got a point <laughs> next hey that was i guessed <laughs> diablo Ooh. uh all yes there you go very good it's huh. it's on PlayStation and stuff. Yeah, I think. The no the original Diablo. Well, you no no it. okay so. No, this was the okay. So the last one there, of course, is PC first. Some of these may have on PC too. They were only talking about Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo, and some of the all. But the last Diablo three there, um, it was like way too sensitive to get into the specifics of those. Whatever. Okay. You wanted to give him a point. I'll let it happen. All right. Next. Bloodborne. PlayStation. PlayStation. God. Yeah. I should probably cross these out so I don't say them again. Uh -huh -huh. And then. Da, 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 where'd it go? Bye bye. And this one, bye bye. All right. Next. Coming in hot. Zelda. Nintendo. Nintendo. Uh, ah. <laughs> I All right. went instant replay. Call of Duty. Oh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Caught the grizzly Cody off guard. MLB the show. Uh, PlayStation. PlayStation. Bitches. PlayStation. I, I kind of like those games. They're pretty good. <laughs> I've heard good things. I wish I, you know, again, played more. I had the time to try some of those out. Forza. Xbox. Xbox. Really? No, wait, I'm wrong. Oh, I'm so Xbox. wrong. Oh, I'm so wrong. <laughs> That's not as bad as Zelda. Next. So. Ready. All right, here we go. Titanfall. That's Xbox. Xbox, Xbox Dakota got it. All right, okay. coming in next. Gears of War. Xbox. Oh, Dakota again. I All I right. At the same time, I swear. Nah, nah. Little Big Planet. PlayStation. PlayStation, yeah. Okay, he's fucking focused now, boys. 
Had your Wheaties. Saints Row. Xbox. Xbox. Both. All. Oh. It's on Switch now, oh, too. Oh, there you go. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? It is actually all. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Got a couple left here, fellers. Animal Crossing. Nintendo. Nintendo. Oh, Dakota. Yep. I'm not keeping track of points. I don't know. <laughs> I feel like I'm saying it at the same time. Dead Rising. But it is his past. Uh, at uh, Xbox. Did you hear me? Xbox. Xbox, yep. Dun, da, 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 da. I got one left. Pokemon. Nintendo. Nintendo. Uh, 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 need, let me think another one real fast off my head. Here we go. Going with Harvest Moon. Nintendo. There you go, Brandon. Oh uh, yeah, that, yeah, that's GameCube icon right there. It, yep, definitely. It okay, kind of so that brings me to something I had feedback from a listener um, from our first episode where we talked about nostalgia and older games that we liked and everything. The only thing I can think of why we did not mention this game is because it was too much of a pinnacle part of our live um, Pokemon. I remember spending neck breaking hours sitting on my porch playing Pokemon on the on on the uh my game uh boy that's the word um they didn't have the lit screen yet and just like playing trying to play that forever and then one of our favorite stories Brandon you know where I'm going is Pokemon Ruby beating uh Ruby baiting Ruby what you do is you get yourself a Pokemon Ruby and a family pack of Doritos and you beat that bad boy in one night taking turns on the couch with your buddy uh and that was just what we did. I wow, think I yeah. forgot. I think I forgot Pokemon because it was such a constant in my life that it was just always a part of me when I was growing up. Always had my Game Boy. Exactly. Always it was, played it. I don't know why it was we handheld. forgot it. It's absolutely insane that right. We did I not think miss partially. It. Right. I'm ashamed, but I think partially because it was such a part of our lives and it was handheld. We we're mostly focusing on console stuff, so I will give us a little bit of leeway with that but yes I, and how far pokemon's come and changes but i mean i remember yeah. that's how like we're on the on the bus ride home man playing pokemon that's how i got through the bus ride you know yeah oh my gosh yeah, i completely forgot about that yeah right it's it's so weird all right guys that's that's wrapping up the show here what do y'all want to shall we discuss now what do you think we should talk about next episode i don't know it should be a specific genre or something out of the box like this with controllers. Have you all had any uh, ideas you want to discuss? What if we talk about video games that everyone loves that we just did not like? Hmm. There you go. I think so. We should bring some hate. Bring some hate to our listeners. Let's talk bad about their love. <laughs> I never played Zelda. Ooh. <laughs> nah, yeah, I never did. Sims. I never cared I'd, to play for um, Sims. Ooh, that's it. <laughs> Fucking done. All right. Yeah, that'll work. Bye. Uh, we're sending out applications for a third star in the Game Chatter podcast. No! If you'd like to apply, please. <laughs> please. All right, guys. Uh, again, if you have any information or like to share some love or hate with us, feel free to the Game Chatter podcast uh, email. I'll have that tagged in here below somewhere probably. And then also the Discord channel is running hot and heavy now. Episode lovely. Guys. Anything you'd like to say before we ski to idle? Yeah, I appreciate all you guys. Uh, definitely uh, loving the feedback. Uh, any suggestions now that we have uh, Discord and emails, and we'd love to hear suggestions. We'd love to hear from y'all. Uh, thank y'all so much, and I'll try to redeem myself from my Zelda mistake. Uh, don't hate, no hate mail, please. I'm sensitive. Never uh, living it down. <laughs> all right, guys. This concludes the episode three. We'll catch y'all later. Bye. Later.